I think for me, autumn is the second best season. Spring is without doubt, when they're all going crazy. Then we have a bit of the doldrums, the dog days of summer. There's some lovely fishing to be had, but for me, it's when there's a little bit of nip in the air, the leaves come into flower, all those copper and bronzes, and they can't match that as well. They start to get beautiful colours. They're well past their spawning. They're in beautiful condition. They're a little bit hungry. They can sense, like we can, that winter's not too far away, so they can't have a hungry belly. They want to get on the feed a little bit and put a bit of bait in and win a bite. And for me, a beautiful chestnut, big old carp with the leaves behind me to match. I don't think you can better that. Bit of a result. Wasn't looking good when I arrived yesterday afternoon and I had little to go on. I've only two fish caught in the last two weeks which is very poor for this lake. Everything's cooling down, but I've got my rigs out in three different spots and we've got the ball rolling early this morning. Okay, look at that creature. I'd say a low 20 and absolutely stunning. What a way to start things off. Lovely colors to match into the autumn colors behind me. Magnificent creature. I know it's easy said, but sometimes the scales on the flank are so import more important than the scales that you read a number off of. And this is one of those. So I'm gonna get her back now, work on things today, and hopefully catch one or two more. I'm at a beautiful old Capability Estate Lake. Wonderful place, really silty with the odd deeper hole where the carp have actually excavated the bottom. Some lovely fishing here, and I'm deep in the valley, hunkered down away from the wind. Lovely place to be, and a great time is autumn, when all the trees are starting to come into flower. Yesterday when I turned up, I went for a walk around the lake. Believe it or not, where I'm fishing, I don't probably think that the most fish are where I am. They're further up the pond, but sometimes, you want to pick a place where it's easier to win a bite. And down the end I am, there's a lot of other fish. And then you can just see another tinge of colour through the water. I know in that confusion I'm more likely to win a bite than where it's crystal clear at the top of the pond. It might be surprising that I've caught a fish and I'm reeling in, but I think the feeding spell's over. And when the feeding spell's over, there's no point having lines in the water. I know from experience that if I get lines out, more fish are likely to draw in, feel comfortable, and I can slowly harvest my spot. I might catch one more fish by casting out now, but I'm fairly confident if I feed again, get the confidence up, I might get two or three. And that's what it's all about. It's a game plan. So I've reeled in. I'm going to rest the swim, get the lines out of the water. That's so important. And the busier the lake, the better that is to feed your swim and get lines out. I know it's so hard to do, but I've learned it through barbel fishing, chub fishing. Many times I'll feed all morning, have them going crazy, and then I'll cast out. And I won't catch one, I'll catch the whole shoal. So I always put that into practice with carp fishing. So now the feeding spell's over, I'll reel in, rest it. I'm going to bait up though. I'm going to put some bait in, so they'll start grubbing around, get a little bit of confidence. I think the next real feeding spell will be tonight. So hopefully I'm gonna get a bite. When it comes to rigs, I have very little in my locker. It's all about finding the fish and getting them to feed. I just want something tangle free, very simple, but equally efficient. For pop-up fishing, I would say 99% of pop-up fishing, I would use a chod, depending on the scenario, or a Ronnie rig. But most of my fishing, if I can get away with it, I like a simple, a really simple bottom bait. And this is what I'm gonna use on this session. I've got an ESP, lead clip, I've put the towel rubber on, 
um, to stop the lead coming off um, at will. It will come off if fish got snagged, but um, if it was very weedy, I'd just tag it on so it'll fall off. Then we come down a little bit of tubing just to kick everything out, stop the tangles. And next is a really important part, the material. This is tungsten loaded. I find it blends in beautifully with the bottom. A lot of my underwater photography and filming, I've noticed that if you pick the wrong material, um, it's all about compromise. It, it, it can really affect your presentation. Tungsten loaded has got enough stiffness, this is the semi-stiff, to lay down fully extended, either on the cast or if a fish sucks it up, it'll reset itself, but not too much so it doesn't arch up. What you'll find with a lot of stiff materials, they arch up off the bottom and they're so obvious. So always have a look at the material that you use and how it's sitting on the bottom. And I prefer tungsten loaded. I've got a shot there as well to aid with the process of just pinning everything down out of the carp's way. And I said it's really simple. You can't get more retro and simpler than this. I come down to a cryogen gripper, size five, probably my favorite pattern at the moment. Then I've got a little piece of shrink tubing just to create a liner liner. And that causes a real acute angle. If you notice as well, I haven't stripped back. Everyone else that I've ever met strips back these coated materials. I don't, I leave it in place. So it creates even more of an acute angle. That's what I want. It just turns in the mouth I find so much better. Not this knot, and then I come down to a little bit of shrink tubing that sits round on the bend. I adjust that position and I just pull it over the palm of my hand so I make sure wherever that sits, it'll just cock it and pull the hook round into the palm of my hand, acting as if it's the fish's mouth. I would say I always use with a dense bait shrink tube in there. A lot of people I've seen use on dense baits, they use a, a little ring. That works okay on balanced baits and certainly on pop-ups, but what you'll find is you want the weight of the boilie because the weight of the boilie stays there on the bend. It actually helps pull the hook home. If you had a ring, it'd slip down to the eye of the hook and the rest of the hook is floundering around in the mouth and can easily be spat out. But it's very simple, that's a tough krill boilie just on a hair, nothing to it really. It doesn't tangle, it lays nicely, corrects itself, catch fish on it. I'm gonna put that out on all three rods and let's see what happens. Well, the temperature's dropped, and as you can see, it's dark. Rested the swim for the, for the day, all day. Um, hopefully, now under the cover of darkness, the carp have gained confidence, and they'll start to get their heads down. Um, all three rods are out on different spots. I'm happy where they are. It took a few casts. Um, I'm never, ever, um, bothered about doing a recast unless I'm going to spook, feel I'm going to spook them. Unless it's bang on and I can go to bed with that happy feeling that they're on the spots, I'll keep doing it. It doesn't matter whether it takes one cast or 12. And these all landed well. I'm confident they're fishing. Um, the hours are calling. I've already heard a carp splosh out over the middle rod. So things are looking good. I'm going to go to bed happy and hopefully be dragged up in the middle of the night to play a carp. We'll see.
Well, I was hopeful last night and it didn't disappoint. I could hear some carp leaping and I was certain I was gonna get a bite, but it took until the last couple of hours of darkness for one of the alarms ripped off. They just get better and better. Apple slice scales, look at that. Corker, made up with this one. When I put the head torch on and parted the mesh, what a fantastic fish. A real scaly linear, beautiful, typical autumn carp in prime condition. And I think I've got a really, really classic autumn fish ready for me in the sling, which was my second bite. I'm gonna have a look at it in a minute, but if I remember correctly, under torchlight, it's got a lovely yellowy belly and it matches autumn perfectly. Despite the abysmal conditions, let's lift this one up. A beauty. Real lovely autumn mirror inside here to show you. Not quite 30 pounds, a couple of ounces under. Being an honest man, but look at this old beast. Big old leathery one. Love it. Look at that yellowy belly. Oh, let me lift you up. There you go. Look at that. Lovely leathery carp. Cracker. I like you. Me? Everyone wants scaly fish. I don't. I prefer big porkers like this. Right, I thought that was it for the session. I was thinking of going. I'll put that lovely big fat yellowy uh, mirror back and uh, the weather's coming. I should have packed up earlier, I was thinking, because it looks like it's gonna rain, but thank God I didn't. I'm in again. I was thinking it was over. And out the blue, just a one toner. Oh, come on. He's obviously found a wee bed. Hopefully, I can just prize it out. Now he's heading up the pond. Right, have a walk. Keep the tension up. Always the same feeling, like being a kid again. Oh, that's a nice one. Oof. Up she comes. Just nice and steady. Keep it on a long line so you're not putting too much pressure on the hook hold. And she's in. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm liking that a lot. That's a lovely fish. I don't actually think you're as big as I first thought. You're still a mid-20. You're a little porker. I love them all. Let's get that fin round. Nice and comfortable for it. And a nice way to end a great trip. Things were looking tricky when I arrived, not many fish caught, but by just doing some simple things well, you get yourself 
some nice carp. So I'm gonna put this back and hit the road for my next adventure. <laughs>